Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. What am I going to talk about today? Today I'm going to talk about should you be buying or renting a house this year? Simple as that. Because of the rising interest rates right now, globally what's been happening is interest rates have been going up. That means your loans are going up, your home loan interest rates are going up. If you already have a loan, you'll notice that your EMIs are going up or your tenors are being increased. So in this kind of current environment, and Anand feels that this environment is going to be here for some time. So, of course, we cannot keep waiting to buy a house. Some of us have to buy a house because we're in that situation in life. We don't have infinite time to sit and wait for interest rates to go down again. So we have to look at the option, maybe exercise the option of buying a house, though the rates are very high. So I wanted to put some things into perspective before you decide to buy the house. And I do understand there is a surging demand in the market for accommodations in certain areas and certain cities. And there's been a surge in rental prices. What used to cost to rent 40,000 rupees now has gone up to somewhere 60. Some have even gone up to 80. And some are even touching now 1 lakh. The same property, which was renting for 50, 60,000 rupees a year or two ago, has almost doubled in rental demands. So that has also been one of the reasons why a lot of you are looking at and investigating the idea of actually buying the property instead of renting it. So what you need to basically understand is you need to sit down and analyze your rent versus your EMI. It's a simple calculation which you can do by opening a spreadsheet or opening a SIP calculator and you look what is your rental demand right now and what will be your EMI demand. And you have to compare and see if your rent, what you're paying is more than your EMI or is equal to your EMI then it's definitely worth buying the place. If your rent is still lower than your EMI, then you should look at staying in a rental place. So this is the main thing to look at if you have ticked off all the other boxes. The other boxes in your financial analysis should be, can you afford to buy the house? How safe and secure is your job? Are you in an industry where there's a lot of high iteration? So is there a likelihood if there's a further downturn in the economy, if there's a recession, that you might be in a situation where you might be out of work for some time. And then you should analyze and see how long might you be out of work. Is it six months? Is it nine months till you'll be able to pick up another job? And during that six months to nine months, will you be able to make EMI payments? Because we never want you to default. So have you saved enough? Do you have enough in your kitty, in your petrol, in your tank, as they say, to make sure if a downturn does affect you, you'll be able to continue without changing your lifestyle, without changing your lifestyle, meaning affording the basic necessities of life, paying your school fees, your medical fees, whatever is required, and still pay your EMI and be happy mentally. Are you in a position to do that? That is another financial analysis which you need to do before you bite into taking on the EMI. So keep that in mind. In the side of rental, what you should look at if you decide to stay I'm not going to buy, I'll continue renting, is what you have to keep in mind is rental inflation. Like I said, properties which are renting at 50,000, 60,000 now are expecting anywhere upward of 80,000 to a lakh some, in some places, in some properties. So you have to keep in mind, wherever you are renting right now, what do you think the rental expectations will be a year from now, two years from now? How much do you think it will go? Because you cannot just take the annual inflation rate of 10% or even 7 8% and say this is what it will be. Rental expectations vary from place to place, street to street, house to house, property to property. So you have to seriously look at it. And if you want to be really smart, you can sit and talk to your landlord and fix that expectation and to bake it into your rental agreement. You can beat the curb and tell your landlord, you know what, I'm going to increase the rent by 5% today, this year itself, since you're not even asked for it. So next year, I can give you a nice 5%. So overall, you would have got 10% and work something out with your landlord or pay rental in advance so you can reduce your rental cost. These are ways and means like what I was talking about EMI to mitigate any job loss. Same way, you can use the same strategy and talk to your landlord and fix something where you're paying 5% more now, so to assure that you're not increased beyond that a year later, you get into a contract like that, or you pay 
a year's worth of rental in advance so that way you don't have to worry about in case a downturn happens and you're affected you don't have, you're not out in the streets that you pretty much are secure for a year or so these are different ways and strategies you can use and try and have situation where you can manage if things turn bad and things turn sour now coming to buying buying cost most important thing in when it comes to buying is having the down payment ready which is 15 to 20% so if you are planning to buy remember that to keep that 15 to 20% ready you need to first get that done second thing you need to do is you have to have registration cost and uh, all other utility costs to transfer the electricity to your name and all other things moving and the, if you're buying a new place moving and if you're buying a place which is a second hand maybe painting and some maintenance work so work all that into your cost before you even think of going and approaching the bank for a loan so you need to work out all these numbers and put all these numbers into place thinking hypothetically before you even start shopping because when you put these numbers down hypothetically down you'll arrive at a position to know what you can really afford and what you aspire to afford are two different things so once you know what you really can afford and if your aspirations match what you can afford then you can start shopping because you don't want to be in a situation where you aspire for something more and you can't afford that and you have to settle and the sad thing would be though you've bought a new house you won't feel like you got what you wanted and you can feel qu- quite rotten about it so keep that in mind what your aspirations are and what you can afford try and match them before you venture out trying to do this and do realize when it comes to interest we are in an environment where interest rates can go further meaning whatever the emi is today no bank is going to give you a fixed rate right now in the environment that to a long term loan so they'll want to give you a floating interest rate they will try to sell it to you saying this is good for you sir if you take floating because if the interest rates start coming down then you will get benefit of getting less emi they'll tell you to you like that or they'll tell you we'll reduce your tenor all that is true but in the short term at least for the next couple of years because of the way inflation is most central banks will keep interest rates high or even take it higher as just now recently the fed has spoken again they've said they want to control inflation further and they're looking at raising interest rates again that not to think that they're not going to do it they want to keep that option out there in the market because people started being very excited thinking fed is going to start cutting interest rates and what i would strongly advise you to do if you are this is all spoken in terms of this being a main dwelling this what you're buying being a main residence your dwelling where you're going to live if you are thinking about doing this as an investment to speculate please don't there's not a current environment to speculate in real estate with the way the world is right now unless you have a lot of money you are someone who is very wealthy you're definitely not watching my channel or interacting with me people of that nature yes they can go play with it and they will make always news and headlines where they have bought a property like ambani for so many million dollars or million pounds or billion dollars like buying an island off dubai you guys cannot carry on doing that i'm not addressing you but people in middle class and lower middle class where i'm addressing please do not speculate do not think about buying a property and trying to flip it someone is giving it to you at a discount because they are under distress they're discounting it remember they think have an aspiration value of 1 crore and they're discounting and selling it to you for 80 lakhs don't think you make only make a profit of 20 lakhs the true price of the property will only be known when you try and find a real buyer for that property and you don't know that it's not like a stock market so you can be left holding the short straw so be very careful and there is a cultural things like in india where parents and we are built up brought into society thinking that home ownership means security home ownership is not security the reason why we have that notion is back then we did not have a stock market we did not have mutual funds and as a middle class to lock some wealth somewhere we had property and real estate as somewhere to feel we are safe and lock some of our wealth into now there are various platforms and methods of Uh, locking wealth and saving money so real estate is not uh, the end all of all things to save money and to show wealth that mentality will change in in a generation or two i'm telling you to catch up to that point now itself and not wait to be there i'm saying we are already here so don't get sucked into cultural factors and say my mummy daddy want me to do this 
mummy daddy don't want you to do anything and be happy and be leading a good and healthy life yes out of that fear they're telling you to buy a house because they don't want you to suffer because their generation suffered and their parents generation suffered your generation is very different and another big thing is the rural urban divide in india that's still there people coming from uh, rural areas or c cities d cities feel that by buying a city uh, apartment or a property in a b tier city or a a tier city that they moved up in life it is not true that's because you buy a city close to chennai or the outskirts of chennai doesn't mean anything nowadays so having a property in your hometown is also as good as having a property in chennai there's no necessity to liquidate something there and to buy something here it's not like you're growing your investment or anything like that india has become well connected and we are a growing population and everywhere and anywhere is good now that too with internet and the way the economy is developing you don't need to be in a city to do your work anymore so keep that in mind this urban rural divide in real estate is a myth it's not true you can hold on to your property we already have in rural areas and there's no necessity to liquidate it and move it all to the city and uh, remember there are lots of legal uh, requirements legal regulations if you are looking at buying a second hand property and it's not a new property make sure you do get it checked and vetted by a good lawyer and don't run into things and agree to things get all your agreements checked and verified don't get pressurized it's always okay to walk away from a deal if it don't feel right and if it's a builder and you're buying a new property please do verify and check the builder don't buy a property without having this done even if it is a reputed builder nowadays even reputed builders seems to be running into problems in the quality of their building and uh, the way the buildings have been built lots of shortcuts have been taken recently by a lot of big developers so be careful out there when you're buying your property i hope i was able to persuade you either one way or another and help you made a wise and profoundly life changing decision in the right way which works for you thanks for watching the video today and i'll see you in the next one soon bye i will be in kuwait as you know on 24th november the friday between 3:30 and 6:30 pm i am at the yakub banquet hall millennium hotel and convention center ring road abu tar al ghafari street kuwait those desirous of meeting me there can contact the whatsapp number given below or drop a mail at the email id given my team will contact you at the earliest it's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me i have written two books in english the alchemy of money and ordinary stocks extraordinary profits these books are published by us and are ready if you want to procure a copy send us a message to the whatsapp number given below and my team would respond to you if you want an amazon kindle copy you can click the link below finally those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to beerichenglish@gmail.com once again i thank you for your support If you like this video press the subscribe button of my channel hit the like button and turn on the bell notification